like to call to order the um, Zoning Board of Appeals to Town of Watertown, and the time is, I don't know, what do we got? 7.04. 7.04. Um, I'd like to have the Secretary do the roll. Rick Sarandria. Phil Roger. Here. Ned Dalton here. Vinny Gianetto. Roger Mitchell. Gary Swingle. Here. Jeff Franson. Here. Okay, I'm going to seat um, Jeff Franson for uh, Roger Mitchell, and we'll seat Gary Swingle for uh, our chairman, Rick String Andrea. Um, you want to read the uh, ground rules? Zoning Board of Appeals ground rules. One, the applicants or their representatives will make their formal presentation to the board stating their specific hardship and precisely why this merits a variance for the zoning regulations of the town of Watertown. Two, all comments, discussions, and observations shall be made through the chair after proper recognition by the chairman. This is necessary to ensure that only one person at a time speaks on any issue, thus making it easier for everyone to understand and for clearer legal transcription. Three, all persons addressing the board shall begin by first clearly stating their name and address for the record. If necessary, the person may be asked to spell his or her name for the record. Four, following the presentation of the application, the Zoning Board of Appeals will ask specific questions of the applicant. Five, after the board has asked its questions of the applicant, the chairman shall then allow members of the public who wish to speak in favor of the application or against it to address the board. Six, the chairman shall then allow the applicant to respond to the comments of the members of the general public. Seven, the chairman shall then allow any members of the general public who wish to present any additional information or clarifying discussion to do so. Eight, the chairman shall then provide an opportunity for the applicant to respond to the additional remarks if they or their representative so wish. Nine, the Zoning Board of Appeals has 35 days from the date the public hearing commences to complete the public hearing. The board may ask the applicant for a 35-day extension of the public hearing period if the board requires any additional information or wishes to schedule a site walk to observe the situation for themselves. 10, the Zoning Board of Appeals has 65 days from the date when the public hearing is closed to render its decision. The board may or may not make its decision tonight at its regular meeting following the public hearing. 11, you must stay for the regular meeting if you wish. You may stay for the regular meeting if you wish, or you may leave at the end of the public hearing and contact the zoning office the following morning to determine the status of your application. So, uh, first public hearing we have is application 2022-4 of Elias Deros for three variances of the Watertown zoning regulations concerning setbacks and lot coverage for construction of an addition to an existing single family home at 22 Lisbon Street, Oakville, Connecticut. Can I have the applicant come forward and state your name and address for the record, please? Uh, Mr. Chairman, there is a legal notice. First, oh, let's, let's okay. read that. Uh, okay, okay, just a minute. Legal. You could come forward. I'm going to read the legal notice. Town of Watertown Zoning Board of Appeals Legal Notice. The Zoning Board of Appeals of the Town of Watertown will hold a public hearing at 7 p.m. on Wednesday, July 27th at 2022 at the Watertown Town Hall Town Council Chamber, 61 Echo Lake Road, Watertown, Connecticut, to hear and act upon the following application. Application number 2022-4 of Elias Deros for the following three variances of the Watertown Zoning Regulations. One a variance of eight feet to a front property line setback street line of Augusta Street, two, a variance of 21.5 feet to a rear property line setback, and three, a variance of 7% additional impervious surface coverage. Those variances are requested for construction of a 32 by 28 addition to an existing single family home to be located 27 feet from the property line on Augusta Street, eight and a half feet from the rear property line, bless you, and brings 
the t total impervious surface coverage of the lot to 42% at 22 Lisbon Street, Oakville, Connecticut, in an R12.5 residential zoning district. Section 12.8 of the Watertown Zoning Regulations requires minimum 35-foot front property line setback and 30-foot rear property line setback for principal buildings and maximum of 35% impervious surface coverage in an R12.5 residential zoning district. At this hearing, interested persons and in written communications will be heard. A copy of the application is on file in the Planning and Zoning Office, Watertown Municipal Center, 61 Echo Lake Road, Watertown, Connecticut. Dated in Watertown, Connecticut this 14th day of July, 2022. Dated in Watertown, Connecticut this 21st day of July, 2022. Edwin Dalton, Secretary, Boarding, Zoning Board of Appeals. I've got two quick questions. Uh, Musa, just two quick questions. Sure. The, the legal notice that the, uh, the addition is 32 by 28, the drawing says 22 by 28. So is it is it 22 by? 22 by then that's the type, okay. but it should be so 22 by 28. 22. Okay. Thank you. But yes. there's also a 10 by 10 piece, so it's 32 on that one piece. For the deck? That is why we added that. You added right. that. Yes, okay. yes. Second question is, um, it says a um, front property setback of Augusta Street. So does yes. that mean that there are side, side setback is on Lisbon? No, it is a corner lot. It's a corner lot. Has frontage on Lisbon, Lisbon. Street and also <coughs> frontage on Paper Augusta Street. It's a paper road. Right, it's a paper road. Yes. Been developed. Yeah. But understand. But can't the owner say that I want no. it to be a side? Frontage. No, there is two frontage. frontage. There are Got two it. frontage. Then they can pick and choose which one is the side and which one is the rear. Got it. Yes. Thank you. Sure. Okay. I have the applicant state your name and address for the ad uh, for the record and. Proceed with your application. Why? Okay. My name is Elias Daros, and I live at 22 Lisbon Street here in Watertown. We've applied for these variances uh, to allow us to have an in-law apartment uh, built off the back of our house. The reason is that my mother-in-law is elderly at this time. She lives alone. She has some medical issues, and. We'll be able to take care of her in a timely manner, and she doesn't currently live near us. So this in-law apartment will give us the opportunity, as I said, to take care of her for the foreseeable future with whatever needs she has. Okay. Do any of the board members have any questions for the applicant? The 10 by 10 is a deck. No, the 10 by 10 is going to, if we need it, is for a storage area. It's not going to be a deck. For storage, like a shed or storage no, for indoor the storage, inside? No, indoor storage. Indoor storage. Like for a pantry or a closet. Yeah. Is there any way that could go somewhere else? Okay. Is the addition going to have a basement? No. No, it's going to be on a slab. Slab on grade. Yes. What's your hardship? I apologize. What is your hardship? Hardship is for us to take care of my mother-in-law who has medical issues and she lives alone and she lives about an hour away from us. And that way we can be able to take care of her. Musa, have you had a chance to take a look at this, or? Yes, Mr. Chairman, actually, I was there today, and I look at that. There is two issues there that created this hardship for the property owner. This property is located in R12.5 zoning district, but the lot area is 10,000 something. Yeah. Yeah, it is 10,452 square feet. And I don't know how the Planning and Zoning Commission approved these lots, because this is a new subdivision and this, this lot's supposed to be minimum 12,500 square feet. That is one hardship with this application, and the second thing is this is a corner lot, and if this was just a normal lot, they didn't need 35 feet from Augusta Street, they needed only 10 feet. Right. And that's also something that the zoning regulations created this situation for the property owner, which is not under their control, they cannot change it. Okay. 
Right. And at one point, I suggested that the applicant can go to the town and talk to other neighbors to maybe they can get rid of that, I guess, I see the paper part of it, and then divide it into the two properties. But the Public Works Department, they will not agree. They wanted to keep it the way it is. And it's kind of like they tried their best to avoid this, at least one variance. But the Public Works, they said that they want to keep the, the paper street the way it is. And uh, to be honest, these two situations actually created this hardship for them. And this lot is already kind of overdeveloped. Any addition will goes over the uh, maximum uh, impervious and building coverage. Is it currently over the maximum? Oh, the, currently it is good. By, by putting this addition, they mm -hmm. will go over the maximum, right. yes. I mean, the paper street probably wouldn't, won't be developed. Probably will not. We don't know, but uh, I have a problem with the eight and a half feet in the back because the back lot could be developed. Now mm -hmm. you're only eight feet from the property line. Is there any way you could put that to the side? Towards Possibly. the Augusta Street side? To keep Possibly that room. or we don't use it. I mean, that was it was it's in there because that was our game plan. But if it can't be, the lot behind us is wetlands, and the lot behind us is locked because Mr. Paletta owns that property behind. So unless that road is going to be developed and and everything, it, those lots aren't going to be well, available could, for use. Well, you could well, put a I driveway mean, if he decides to. If it's possible to build on the lot, if he de decides to develop the street enough to get to the lot, then then it causes a problem at that point. Okay. We could look to alter that. Can you live without that 10 by 10 addition part of it? I mean, the or 22 by 28 is kind of like okay, but... That was the you... living space. Yeah, the whole 22 by 28 is the actual living space. We're trying to see if we can give a little bit of storage area for her. If we right. can put it in a different spot, that's okay, fine. And if, I guess if we can't use it, then we can't use it. But you cannot well, build it if the commission doesn't approve no, that. Right. You cannot I know build it. That. Yes. We, we, we want to try and help you with your needs. I understand. Um, so would it be possible to make it, put it on the Augusta Street side or make it a little smaller? Yeah, Bo both are, are, are options if that's, if that's the option we have. Yes, the size of the actual living space is the 22 by 28. Right. And if you put it on the side of Augusta Street, then the, the variance from that front property line will increase. Right. Right. It creates yes. other. Right. Yes. You have to increase it that on that. Create another problem. Right. <coughs> but down the road, it would be a. I think a better problem because Augusta Street wouldn't be as wide as 50 feet. Mm -hmm. You'd always be away from the. Right, right. I yeah. think. Yeah. yeah, you're right. I think uh, by land use law, you can reduce the requested variance, but you cannot increase. Because right. from that side, right. they are asking for a side, smaller right. variance. Then right. basically by putting that on the other side, you are increasing the variance. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's kind of like against the right. land use uh, mm -hmm. principles. If there is no need for that uh, storage area, If there is no need for that storage area, I think that the addition it will be fine. What would be the minimum size we could have if we could do it? This 22 by 28? Well, no, if there's... No, if you it, made the 10 by 10 smaller... Yeah, I was wondering, what would be the... Yeah, what would be the... If you made it 8 by 10, at least then there's 10 feet to the property line. If you give me a dimension, the smaller dimension, and we can do that. That's what the rest I, of the like property the is. Is ten, ten, you know, just for fire trucks and things. It just seems like reasonable on the land. Yeah. Okay, so 
You are suggesting that it should be 8 by 10 instead of 10 by 10? It's smaller than 10 by 10. Okay. It's fine. Is that okay? Okay. It's fine. I'm okay with that. Okay. So the applicant is um, aware that we're going to change the the 10 by 10 shed to 8 by 10. It minimizes the variance. any other questions from the board members? Well, it's okay. not really a, a shed. It's actually going to be part of the. It's actually right, it's part of the living area. Okay. Okay. Yeah, it's not Sorry, separate. Yeah, it's from, not a shed. It's yeah. a part of the living area. You're going to shrink it from 10 by 10 to 8 by 10. That's fine. Is there anybody from the public that wishes to speak in for or against this application? Anybody from the public would like to speak for this app for or against this application? Hearing none, can I have a motion from the board? Motion to close the public hearing. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. We're we'll vote on it later on tonight. They, they closed meeting. the public hearing. You can wait there that they get to the regular meeting. They come back on this application. Please sit, sit there. Okay, moving along to the next application. Application 2022-6 of Stephen Cromola for variance of 19 feet to front property line setback for construction of a porch to be located 16 feet from a front property line at 165 Tarbell Avenue, Oakville, Connecticut in R12.5 Residential Zoning District. Can I have the... Uh, Secretary, read the League of Laws, please. The Zoning Board of Appeals of the Town of Watertown will hold a public hearing at 7 p.m. on Wednesday, July 27, 2022, at Watertown Town Hall Council Chamber, 61 Echo Lake Road, Watertown, Connecticut, to hear and act upon the following application. Application number 2022-6 of Stephen Sermola for a variance of 19 feet to front property line setback for construction of a 7 by 11 front porch to be located 16 feet from the front property line at 165 Tarbell Avenue, Oakville, Connecticut, in an R12.5 residential zoning district. Section 12.8 of the Watertown Zoning Regulations requires a minimum 35-foot setback from property lines for a principal building in an R12.5 residential zoning district. Application... At this hearing, interested persons and written communications will be heard. A copy of the application is on file, Planning Zoning Office, Watertown Municipal Center, 61 Echo Lake Road, Watertown, Connecticut, dated in Watertown, Connecticut, this 15th day of July 2022, dated in Watertown, Connecticut, this 21st day of July 2022, Edwin Dalton, Secretary, Zoning Board of Appeals. Okay, can I have the applicant come forward? Okay, and uh, state your name and address for the record, please. Steve Sermola, 165 Tarbell Avenue. Okay. Could you tell us something about your application and yes. your hardship? The house was built in 1950. Codes were changed, I believe, somewhere in the 60s. Uh, as a result, my house is non-compliant um, or non-conforming. Um, existing porch consisted of about a three foot by 20 foot overhang. Uh, asphalt walkway, when I come to my front door, I get dumped with water. And um, I had the thought as I'm doing landscaping, trying to improve the property to change that porch. Essentially, I'm coming five feet out more. My house, even with that five feet, my house is about 40 eight feet back from the road. So it's not very close to the road. Um, so the porch I designed is appropriate for the scale of the house. I think one of my neighbors or two of my neighbors are here. To, they saw a mock-up of it. They think it's appropriate and um, they approve of it. Um, I think it would help me because the existing walkway was asphalt up to a concrete stoop up to the house. This allows a nice flowing, almost flat way to get in access to the front of my house. 
Um, I plan to stay there for the rest of my life. I had an incident a year ago. I had a tumor in my spine. I could have wound up in a wheelchair. This takes that into account. If that should come, um, this allows me to still access the front of my house. Right now, I walked across an asphalt pathway and got dumped with water, and there was really no way to get into the house without stepping up, stepping up. I think Moshe was out. <coughs> he saw it. He probably can attest to, to that. The hardship is that, that the code change prevents me from making that change to my house. Uh, very um, sensitive to the neighborhood. Joe Pergini is right across the street, has to look at it. Everything I try to do is with him and my neighbors in mind. And um, so beyond the fact that it helps me in terms of my longevity at the property. And that's basically it. I don't know what you have there if you need any more. I do have photos, a photo that you can look at to get a sense of the scale of it um, in real life if you need to see that. No, the photo you have here in the pamphlet uh, it gives a good rendition of what you want to put there. And plus it indicates that you already have blocks that extend that far out from the house anyways. I mean, essentially They're you're They're pavers, and, and yeah, those were put down as, you know, in preparation for this, right. I did some other paver work. And, and I don't know if pavers um, constitute impervious or pervious, right. um, but I did figure that out, and I think that's handwritten on there, uh, what percent of that, but I'm gonna actually do more pavers, so my, if they're impervious or pervious, whatever, porous, then I'm actually reducing yeah. that area. Right. Uh, that could be another issue. No, I, I mean, if there was a problem with the impervious surface coverage, it would have been brought up with the application, and I don't think that's a uh, problem right now. I understand. Does uh, any board members have any questions for the applicant? All right, I'll say. Okay, nobody has any questions? Mr. Chairman, I just want to add something. I went yep. to the property to look at that today, and I met the, the property owner there. Uh, I think there, there is a large, like a wide uh, area between the curb and the property line that the town owns. Right. For some reason, they put the road on one side of the right-of-way. There is like 15 to 20 feet of right-of-way on their side. Correct. The house is actually probably like 35 feet from the curb. Right. And this little push will be not even noticeable from the street. And it is in harmony with the neighborhood. The houses across the street are much closer to the road than this porch. And yeah. I, when I saw that, I said that I feel sorry that they have to go through this yeah. to just get a permit for that. I wish I had the power to just issue the zoning permit. I couldn't. <laughs> I sent them to you. Okay. And I don't see any problem with that. All right. Okay, having no more questions, and uh, I'm uh, okay with the applicant's uh, <coughs> pre presentation for these variants. And uh, I just need to know if anybody in the audience is like to speak for or against this application. Anybody like to speak for or against this application? Hearing none, I need a motion from the board. Motion to close the public hearing. Second. Okay, I have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, thank you. You'll be contacted or you can wait and then we'll decide at our regular meeting. Understand. Thank okay. you. All right, moving on. We have application 2022 7 of Amy and Mark Russicillo for two variances of the zoning regulations regarding rear and side property line setback for an existing deck and an existing shed at 21 White Street, Watertown, Connecticut, in an R30 residential zoning district. Have the secretary read the legal notice. The Zoning Board of Appeals of the Town of Watertown will hold a public hearing at 7 p.m. on Wednesday, July 27th at Watertown Town Hall Council Chamber, 61 Echo Lake Road, Watertown, Connecticut, to hear and act upon the following application. Application 2022-7 of Amy and Mark Russulio of 21 White Street, Watertown, Connecticut, for the following two variances of the Watertown Zoning Regulations for R30 Residential Zoning District. Number one, 
a variance of 15 feet to rear yard property line setback for an existing deck located 35 feet from the rear property line. Two, a variance of four feet to a side property line setback for an existing shed located 11 feet from the side property line. Section 12.8 of the Watertown zoning regulations requires a minimum 50 foot setback from rear property line for the deck and 15 foot setback from the side property line for the shed in an R30 residential zoning district. At this hearing, interested persons and written communications will be heard. A copy of the application is on file at Planning Zoning Office, Watertown Municipal Center, 61 Uckle Lake Road, Watertown, Connecticut. <coughs> Dated in Watertown, Connecticut this 15th day of July, 2022. Stated in Watertown, Connecticut, this 21st day of, our, of July 2022. Edmund Dalton, Secretary of Zoning Board of Appeal. Okay, can I have the applicant come forward? <coughs> uh, state your name and address for the record, please. Amy Russell Lillo, 21 White Street, Watertown. Okay, can you explain to us the your application? Yep, so our property goes long, um, and a majority of our property is on the right side of our house, which our leach fields are there and our septic. So we can't build out to the side a deck to enjoy the outside of our yard. So we have built one in the back, but we're too close. Our house itself is probably about 60 feet, 61 feet to the rear property line. So if we were to build, I mean, the deck would be very, very tiny. Um, we did not know we needed a permit for the shed and we had put it there and we put it in an area where it's on the opposite side of where the septic would be in the leach fields, which is on the left side of the property. Um, and that is 11 and a half feet from the side of the property line. So we need the additional four feet in order to keep the shed where it is. Okay. When, when about was the, the deck in the shed constructed? Shortly after we purchased the house. And that's how long? About ago? four years ago. About four years ago? Yeah. We're new homeowners. So, and I had called, and, and it's nobody's fault, I had called the town originally because I knew, um, not about the deck, but the shed, um, after a certain square footage, I would need to report it for tax purposes. So I called to find out what it needed to be within. N permits weren't mentioned, so I wasn't aware. And the only reason I even came to this was we wanted to install a pool this year and somebody mentioned it to me. So I went right to the town and I told them everything that was in the yard to try to clarify, you know, whatever issues that were there. Okay. And we got approved from zoning the health and building for the pool. The pool location was fine in the property. Okay. Is, is there anything that prevents you from moving the shed over the four feet? To, to It'll block zone. access to the back of the yard. It would block access to the back of the yard because of where the corner of the house is and where the shed is. Believe it or not, even moving it four feet, if we needed our our um, our well is in the backyard. If we ever needed any big trucks or anything to come in the back, we wouldn't be able to access it. The shed would block it. And on the right side is where our septic tank is, so we wouldn't be able to have any big trucks come on that side of the property to the back. And we've talked to the homeowners. We, we know them well, the ones on the side, and he has no issues with where the shed is. He can't even see it with the fence and the trees. And our back property is all trees between us and the house behind us that's on Nova Scotia. Okay. Uh, anybody else have any questions for them? Musa, what's this? Mr. Chairman, uh, the property owner applied for a permit for a swimming pool, above ground pool. When I went there and I noticed that there is also a deck and shed and we kind of told them that they, they need a permit for that. This was a little confusing because when they called the, the building department, they asked that, do I need a permit for a shed less than 200 square feet? They said no. But they, they, they forget that they have to come to the zoning office to get a zoning permit. The building department doesn't issue permits <clears throat> for any structures less than 200 square feet. But from the zoning perspective, we, we issue permits for any structure, any size. When it covers land, we, we issue a permit. I think that was confusing that when they called, they said that you don't need a permit, but that was the building permit, right. not the zoning permit. But okay. uh, if you go to the site and see it, it's not big. Like, okay. it, it still does like 35 feet backyard from the edge of the deck to the property line. And uh, 
shed is all wooded that area, and it's, even it's not visible easily yeah. from the road. It's yeah. not visible to anybody around us yet. It, we're, we're fully covered with trees and, um, mm -hmm. and the fence. The fence is a six foot fence, I mean nobody could. Did you send a notice to your neighbors? Yes, I Did have all of them. have here. those green cards? Yes. Can you please give them to Rosa? Yep. Right, does any other board members have any other questions? Just for your information, I already issued the permit for the swimming pool because that meet the zoning setbacks, and these two are just to correct the property to make these things legal for them. Yeah. Okay. All right, no more questions. Does anybody from the public wish to speak for or against this application? Anybody in the public like to speak for or against this application? Hearing none, I need a motion from the board. A motion to close the public hearing. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Okay, we'll move on to the next application. Application 22, yeah, 2022 8 of Rodrigo Cruz for a variance of 12 feet to side property line setback for a 420 square foot gazebo under construction located three feet from a side property line at 11 Georgetown Drive in Watertown, Connecticut in an R30 residential zoning district. Have the secretary read the legal notice, please. Appeals of the Town of Watertown will hold a public hearing at 7 p.m. on Wednesday, July 27, 2022, at the Watertown Town Hall Council Chamber, 61 Echo Lake Grove, Watertown, Connecticut, to hear and act upon the following application. Application 2022 8 of Rodrigo Cruz for a variance of 12 feet to a side property line setback for a 21 by 20 gazebo under construction located three feet from the side property line at 11 Georgetown Drive, <coughs> excuse me, Watertown, Connecticut, in an R30 residential zoning district. Section 12.8 of the Watertown Zoning Regulations requires minimum 15-foot setback from a side property line for an accessory structure in an R30 residential zoning district. At this hearing, interest of persons and written communications will be heard. A copy of the application is on file in the Planning and Zoning Office, Watertown Municipal Center, 61 Echo Lake Road, Watertown, Connecticut. Date of Watertown, Connecticut, the 16th day of July, 2022. Date in Watertown, Connecticut, this 21st day of July, 2022. Federal Office Secretary. Okay, can I have the applicant to state his name and address? Uh, Rodrigo please? Cruz, 11 Georgetown, Watertown. Um, Trying, just trying to build a um, gazebo uh, slash kind of a pergola um, due to uh, like our backyard is so narrow and it's so hard to use our back enjoy our backyard and we started this project with the patio and all this stuff and we had we did get a, a, a bathroom or we we built a bathroom, a bathroom outside of our, our property in our backyard did I have a permit for that and um, it got, it's so like I said it's so narrow it got so hot up, to, like in the back, we can't even enjoy, like like my kids can't enjoy, we can't enjoy with our friends or family outside in the back. So that's why we're trying to shade it in. There's no trees, there's trees on the other side, but I mean, not where we need it to be. So that's why we uh, kind of want to build a uh, kind of a shade or, or um, uh, gazebo in the back. And uh, so we can enjoy the rec here because there's no room at all. Okay. Musa, the, the lots in this area aren't really R30s, are they actual This R30s? is R30, yes. Yes? Yes, this is R30. Okay. This is a weird lot. You can see that this is long yeah. and also a corner lot. It's a corner lot, yeah. And that side is the side property line, not the rear property line. But that is the back of the house. I actually issued a permit for a swimming pool, but Mr. Cruz changed his mind. And instead of swimming pool, they put the the gazebo, the gazebo is a little larger than the swimming pool that we issued the permit for. And that's why he needed a variance and uh, he came to right. Okay, well, I mean, the, the project has already been started. 
Yeah, we like because like here's the thing. we like we like to be outside a lot. We're like pretty much all day, and it, it gets so hot. Even even our siding is bubbling up. There's bubbling our siding like front and back, and it's it's a little tough to be out there and like with my kids and my family, or even even having friends over or family, and we need some kind of a shade area for uh, for us to enjoy our at least enjoy our backyard. I see that the, the, the gazebo is only three feet from the the house. And three feet from the rear property line. No, yes. it's it's 20 inches from the house. It's not it's not an addition. It's a freestanding, and um, there's no there's no footings. Um, there's there's bolts in. It. I mean, we got anchors into the uh, patio, but there's no footings at all. 20 inches from the house. It's about three three to four feet from the property line, which is from the front from 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 my fence line. Okay. So you started building this. I mean, did you get a building permit? I didn't. I didn't know I needed uh, all that to uh, to build to, to put this in. I mean, you, you know that the building department doesn't issue building permits before we sign off on it. Right. Yes, if they don't have a zoning permit, they right. cannot get a building permit. Have you been able to get up there to look at this? Museum? I was there actually before the meeting, yes. uh, and I met with the property owner. Yeah. Yeah. And and I asked that the neighbor behind them, like the closest neighbor to this gazebo, and I said, do they have any problem? I don't know if they came to the meeting or? Um, at, at first, my neighbor, he, uh, when we started, he said, whatever you do, it's, it's up to you. I mean, I, don't, I don't, don't care what you do there. And that's what he said. Even, even last night, uh, he came over, oh, you know, walk up on the sand fence, he said, he doesn't care. And that's pretty much it. He says, he's here today. But uh, that's what you told me last night. So. Did you send a notice to the neighbors? I did to everybody. Do you have the green cards? Yes. Okay, please morning. give them to, of course. to Roseanne. Okay. Did did you did you consider moving the gazebo over and tucking it into into where the corner is closer to the driveway? And that would that would move it from the uh, from the property line. Um, I did consider that, but we have a permit for the uh, garage. We're gonna put a garage there too, though, and, uh, you know, on that side, and it's not gonna work. Where's the garage going? The uh, the, we do have a, an attached garage to the house. We want to do a, a, a detached garage, a 24 by 24, or or five five hundred seventy six square feet garage on that side, and we did we did get a permit for that too. We already have it, so it's already issued and paid for. Right? Do we know where that's going on this? Yes, on that side. What you're talking about on the other side of the house. Maybe on the side of the driveway. Uh, next next to the uh, driveway. Here, is it is it, is it going to be attached to the house or is it no, going to be a standalone? No, it's going to be a detached on a slab. So so. Where the driveway is, you'd be driving straight up and straight into the garage. Then? No, it's gonna be on the right side of the, the driveway. You go up the driveway, and then it's gonna be on the right. Uh, we have the our garage, the existing garage, which is attached to the house. It's on the left to the driveway. That's gonna be basically on the right side of the on the right side of the driveway. Over here. Yes. But that has nothing to do with the gazebo. Gazebo yeah. is well, in the yes. Yeah. Jeff's question was, can you put the gazebo over here? I think if if you go and see way. this, the gazebo is not like it's something. It's not like the ones that you buy from Costco and put it on the ground. It is really built in, and if you go, it's like a solid no, it's, structure. It's, <laughs> it's no, well I, built. I, no, I understand all yes. that. It just it it just from the and maybe maybe it's a site visit, but yes. based on the map, it looks like that. The homeowner has some options that would uh, alleviate some of the problem. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, I mean, if you want to go and see it, that is. Uh, uh, you, you guys are more than welcome to come by and see it. But on the other side, there's. I mean, you can't. I can't put it in there because I have my my kids playground and slide and and then there's a there's a, a there's a little bit of hill. You can't put it. I mean, I won't be able to put anything there though. By um, off the uh, bunker hill. All right, so 
Did you guys like to take a look at this? Let me see if there's anybody here. Yeah, to I know. Um, all right. So we have uh, application hardship stated. Anybody in the audience like to speak for or fa against this application? Okay. Approach and state your name and address for the record, Mr. Cruz, you can sit yes, there. Yes, of course. And, yes. Thank you. Thank you. My name is Mark Fosco. I live at 135 Straits Turnpike, Watertown. Mm -hmm. I actually own the property at 192 Bunker Hill Road, which is adjacent to Mr. Cruz's property. Um, my father lives there. He has life use of the home, but the home is in my name. Uh, he's been there 60 years. He built that uh, house uh, back in 62. The issue I have uh, against this variance being granted is that this structure is extremely large and imposing. It's three feet from the fence, which divides the back of Mr. Cruz's house and the driveway of my property. And the fence is on the property line. Uh, it's 21 by 20. It's built almost as if it looks like it's going to eventually be enclosed as an addition. It's flat right now. I have some pictures I can share with you. Um, and it's over an existing patio, uh, which is probably why he wants to put it where it is. And, and uh, I sympathize with his plight because there is a lot of sun that hits that area of the house all day long, and there's not much yard in that portion. Um, and as he said, he's got a driveway on one side and a hill on the other. So I understand his, his uh, request, um, but it's extremely large and imposing. It also has a, a large chimney, like an outdoor fireplace um, that's there. And because of the elevation difference between my property and his property, my property is about four feet higher. So the top of that chimney is not too much higher than, you know, six or eight feet above the driveway. And my concern there is that when that fireplace is being used, those hot embers waft up into, you know, my property, possibly the structure, the roof, um, the fences, wood could ignite the fence. So I think there may be a fire hazard, let alone the smoke that's going to waft over. And I don't know if that's mentioned in any of this, but uh, this structure is built around that, that chimney. He's describing it as a gazebo, which, like Musa said, you would picture, you know, little octagon-shaped, you know, platform type thing. It doesn't look anything like that. It looks like a second story. Um, I just think it's way too close, considering the layout of the two properties. You would normally consider this a rear or, or a backyard, but because it's a corner lot, it's been designated as a side yard. If it was a rear yard, I think the setback is 35 feet yeah. or 50 feet. Right. Yeah. So 15 is already kind of pushing the limit, let alone to go to three feet. Um, I mean, I think there's other options that don't necessarily have to be permanent. If he wants some shade there for his family, you know, they sell these 12 by 12 pop-up tents. Um, he could do, you know, large umbrellas that collapse. Um, I, I just... Um, don't think this is the appropriate type of structure for that particular situation. Uh, it's just too close, and if you want, I can share some of the photos so you can get a better idea of what, what we're talking about. Okay. All right, thank you. All right, is there anybody else that'd like to speak for or against this application? Okay. Uh, Mr. Fusco is given me some pictures of the uh, proposed gazebo. <coughs> I'll pass them to the other board members.
I think you should go in and look at this. Uh, yeah. You will have a better idea. Are you submitting these pictures into the record that we can keep it, or yeah. you want them back? If I can get the folder back, you can yeah. have yeah, the Okay, I keep the, the I keep the pictures. You can have the folder. Okay, is there anybody in the audience who'd like to speak for or against this application? Anybody else would like to speak for or against this application? Hearing none, I'd like to have a motion. Um, I'll make a motion. We uh, table the public hearing and schedule a site visit uh, to this address. Do I have a second? Second. Okay, I have a motion and a second. You want to schedule that now, or you want to do it in the regular meeting? What about the night of the meeting, like before the meeting? Okay, okay. so we'll schedule a site walk like before. Like 6 o'clock is good? Yeah. 6 o'clock. Is that okay with the other members? Yeah. Yep. Okay, so we should schedule a site walk for uh, before the next monthly Zoning Board of Appeals meeting. Motion to uh, table. I have a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion to have a site walk. Yeah, yeah, that was combined. That's yeah. fine. Yes. Okay. Go right into the regular meeting. You guys all yep. set? Mm -hmm. Mr. Okay. I'm sorry, Mr. Chairman. I just want to let the applicant know what's going on. We will send you a copy of the agenda for the site walk. It will be the night of the meeting, which is the third Wednesday of next month. And you will get also a copy of the agenda for the meeting. Yes, you, you can leave now. All right, we'll go into the regular meeting, and the time is 8.53. Uh, action on minutes. Is that 8.53 or 7.53? Oh, 7.53. Sorry, 7.53, yeah. Action on minutes. I make a motion we approve uh, minutes for a special meeting of May 10th, 2022, the regular meeting of May 25th, 2022, and regular meeting of June 22nd of 2022. <coughs> I, have a, second. I have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, going into old business, we have application 2022 20, of Elias Deros, three variants of the Watertown zoning regulation concerning setbacks and lot coverage for construction of addition to an existing single family home at 22 Lisbon Street in Oakville, Connecticut. Can I have a motion? Motion to approve application 20. 22-4 of Elias Deros for three variances of the Watertown zoning regulations. Second. Okay. But with that reduction that you discussed, right, right. instead of 10 by 10, it should be 8 by 10. Yep. Correct. Okay. Yeah. So there'll be a reduction of from 10 by 10 to 8 by 10 on that uh, mm -hmm. small be two, two feet less addition on the area. side. Okay, we have a motion and a second. All, all in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. We have a motor vehicle application 2022-8 20, of express mechanic service and tires approval for location for use of motor, used motor vehicle dealer and motor vehicle repair at 554 Main Street, Oakville, Connecticut in a BG1 general business zoning district. Okay. I'm Virgilio Ortiz, 118 Spruce Dale Drive in Waterbury, Connecticut. Okay, and I'm so here and I'm part of Express. The location uh, of your building, this is, um, it, could you tell me whereabouts this building is? Uh, this this is, is Bradshaw's. On Main Street. What's that? Bradshaw's uh, Bradshaw? dealership. Bradshaw? Okay, yes. oh yeah. Did, I looked at the did, map, yeah. Didn't, I saw. didn't we already approve? We pro approve a different building, I think, there. For no, there are different buildings. There are different yes. buildings on the yeah. property. Okay, so so the only approval is for where the auto body shop is now, correct? This is or for the main building where Bradshaw's was, where the showroom was. Yeah, but, but if so, 
So the, so the first approval was the same address, the same building, but in the back. Correct? Yes. Yeah. And this approval is for Part the, of the front. 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 Yes. Got it. Okay. Okay. Um, All right. Well, this a, has been a dealer in the past, so I don't see it. It was an existing dealership, yeah. and also they were servicing cars. They were continued the same use. Okay. And you just need a motion to approve that. Need a motion. motion to approve. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, you're all set. Thank you, General. Just for your information, probably this will be the last one that you will review anyway, because in yeah. October, it right. goes back to planning and zoning. <laughs> they deserve it. Yes. <laughs> Count and goes. Yes. Okay, we have an application 2022 of Stephen Sonola for a variance of 19 feet for a front property line setback for construction of a porch to be located 16 feet from a front property line at 165 Tarbell <coughs> Avenue, Oakville, Connecticut, in an R12.5 residential zoning district. Can I have a motion, please? Motion to approve. I'll second. Okay, yeah, I don't see a problem with this porch. I mean, uh, it's, I believe it's necessary for the comforts of the applicant. And uh, the, the home was built prior to zoning, and when zoning went yeah. in, it it, it and the zone changed too. It was R10. They changed it right. to R12.5. Right. That yep. created the hardship too. So, okay. I have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Application 2022-7 of Amy and Mark Russicillo of for two variants of zoning regulations regarding rear and side property line setbacks for an existing deck and an existing shed at 21 White Street. Watertown, Connecticut, in an R30 residential zoning district. Can I have a motion, please? I'll make a motion to approve. Second. Okay, I have a motion and a second. Any discussion? I just think the, uh, the layout of the property, as well as the uh, placement of the uh, existing septic system and, um, and the well uh, prevents them from, you know, fully utilizing the property. So I, I think they've met the... Uh, the hardship. Okay, thank you. Any other discussion? Okay, I have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, thanks. App, uh, moving on, application 20, 22-8 of Rodrigo Cruz for a variance of 12 foot to a side property line setback for 420 square foot gazebo under construction located three foot from a side property line at 11 Georgetown Drive, Watertown, Connecticut, in the R30 residential zoning district. Uh, motion to table. I have a motion to table. A second. Sorry. We're going to table this application and schedule a um, site walk for before the meeting uh, of next month's Zoning Board of Appeals meeting. Okay, I have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Communication and bills, Connecticut Federal Institution. Planning and zoning agency's quarterly summary. Can I have a motion to accept, please? Motion to accept. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Good job, Bill. <laughs> Recording stopped. No, really, really good job. Yes. <laughs> Are we off? Are we off? We're off. 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 We're